What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the X-Transbot's Fearvanti, their version of a Masterpiece Omnibot Overdrive. So this comes in vehicle mode in this gorgeous Ferrari 512 Berlinetta Boxer. You got pretty much 100% painted, the red is all painted. You got the silver here for the intake, translucent orange here for these lights, silver for the intake or the chrome grill here and a metallic gunmetal all the way across the bottom. That looks really good. You have red and orange with a little bit of silver in between and then more of that gunmetal there. Gunmetal here on the top for these exhausts or intakes. Uh, you have a little turn signal there, little details. Die cast wheels with rubber tires and these rubber tires um, to roll nicely if you have it transformed properly. Um, I think out of box when I did the unboxing it wasn't transformed perfectly so now it um, it rolls pretty nicely. Um, lots of features here in the vehicle mode so first of all we can open the doors. It's a little tough to get to um, so I recommend a spudger probably not pulling on this is, is a good idea. Um, just get a spudger in from the top and then you can get your door open. There's an actual interior. There's a seat right here. They molded the seats in. To me that was very impressive. And then if you go to the other side, same thing. You can get a spudger in there and then you can pop that open. And not only is there a seat, but there's also a steering wheel in there. That's some real attention to detail. I really like that. Uh, you can also pop up the headlights. If you come to the bottom here, there's two little squares. You can just push up on these and it'll pop up the headlights like that. Same on this side. You can push up on this and I'll pop it up. Now pushing them back down uh, can be a little challenging. So if you push here, you'll feel a resistance. If you feel resistance, it's not going all the way. You can take a spudger and basically just push that kind of rubber piece all the way back down and that'll allow you to collapse the light flush. So you need, kind of have to help it along if it is getting stuck but let's keep these up for now because they do look gorgeous. I love the way those lights look and I like that they work that gimmick in. It's great. Um, you can also put him into his flight mode which is very cool. Let's come to the bottom here, open up these so they're kind of angled 90 degrees. You can take these wings. Um, they do feel like they're, they're bumping into this, but I think that's how it's supposed to work. It gives a little bit of friction. So get those out, and then you can leave this folded like that. Come to the front here. You're going to lift up right here. It's such a subtle little thing, but it almost like is a little hood. It's cool. And then you come to the bottom. You're going to flip this panel around. That's going to tie right back into the top of that gun. And then you can kind of angle these wings or do whatever you want, but um, that looks pretty good. Oh, one more thing. You're going to come to the roof here. We're going to pop this roof up. You're going to grab right here. We're going to rotate these roof panels uh, 180 degrees and basically just put this back down. This is tabbing in right here in the back. So get that pushed down. You can kind of angle these however, but I think it looks best like that. But Look at that flight mode. That really is beautiful. Now in the original images, I thought it included a flight stand. It doesn't. There is a peg slot for a flight stand, but it doesn't come with the flight stand. And since we don't get a stand, we can bring in the fans hobby or Fex hobby display stand. And that'll fit right here. So I think it's a five millimeter peg. And we can get that on there. And that looks really good. I love how this displays. Kind of angle the wings or do whatever you want, but really nice flight mode. Now we can do one more thing is we can bring in this blast effect here, double barrel blast effect that will plug right here on the guns. And now you've got this flying mode, which I think is just really cool. Very well done. And one other thing you can do in the car mode is store all the weapons. So the ones that can fold come to the bottom here and you'll see there's three little spots there 
and you can just plug these in right there. For the bigger one, double barreled gun, the same thing, fold that over, and that's going to plug in right next to it. There, and that sits nice and flat underneath the car. Then you can take this gun, and it took me a while to figure it out, but this will plug in right here. And then if you want, you can use a blast effect on this. Make sure we got the right one. And now you can have that effect in addition to this effect. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And for quick size comparison, there it is next to the Masterpiece Prowl and MP10 Optimus Prime. And fits in perfectly. The car size it just works. It feels basically the same length, about the same height, a little bit shorter maybe, and similar width. So it does really fit well with Masterpiece scale. All right, now let's get this guy transformed into his robot mode. And there are some things to watch out for, but overall, pretty simple transformation. Like I mentioned earlier, if you have trouble pushing these lights back down, just grab a spudger and you know help to bring these gray plastic pieces down. Then you can pop these all the way down. They should pretty much go flush with the hood. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is open up these doors. Again, you might, I would recommend keeping a spudger handy for pretty much this whole transformation because you're going to probably need it. Open up the doors, you're going to fold these rear view mirrors just straight up. They'll probably fall back down, um, but that's how you want it for transformation. Open the door, fold the mirror up. And again, like I mentioned, keep the <laughs> spudger handy. When lift up on this part of the roof, lift up on the Windshield that's tabbed in here and here on two sides. And then I'm just going to slide this forward a little bit so we have some space. Come to the bottom here. We're going to open up these wings until you get it all the way to the other side. Like that. Um, that's going to give you a little bit of room. So we're going to take this panel here, open this up, and then that's tabbed in right here just ever so slightly piece of die cast there. So you're going to lift up that. I'm just showing you that so when you go back to row, car mode you know how to do it. And take this, fold this back, and this can come and sit like that for now. Alright, same on this side. Lift this up, fold this out, fold this down, and then fold this back. Right, just to get it out of the way. Now we're going to come to the side here. We're going to take these arms out. They're actually just tabbed right there pretty simply. So go ahead and fold these wheels. They're on a rotating joint here until they're pretty much all the way straight. Um, I will let you know the tire can collide with some of the stuff down there. So you do want to be careful to not cut the rubber on the tire down there. I right, should just have it like that, almost like a mask vehicle. All right, now we're going to take these arms and we're going to unpeg these from here. They're just attached right there. And just take a look at the top. We're going to basically slide this all the way open. All right? Make sure it clears here so you're not messing up any plastic. So on this side, we're going to open this, unpeg it from here, and just take a look. Make sure it's clearing. And you can open this up and get it out of the way. All right. Come back to the bottom here. Now we're going to open up these. So come to the back. Just lift up here and allow you to take this whole thing and rotate it. All right. Same thing here. Lift up here and then rotate. Those are just pegged in on the bottom there. Now that we've taken those out, we can separate the legs. Just like that. So it's a little bit of gap here. We're going to you know, give yourself a little bit of room because we have to open up this leg. Very similar to a lot of car bots that you're probably used to. You're going to fold knee all the way down. Come to the back of the leg and we will take this panel here, fold that down. We're going to take this panel on the inside here. You may need a spudger or you can use your fingernail to 
pop that all the way open, fold that down so it makes meets up there. Um, there is a little panel here. I'm going to show it to you. I'm probably going to put it back down. Um, it's a cover down panel. It's very hard to get to. It's right in here. Um, I, I noticed the hinge. Uh, very subtle panel, but there is a little clip. You can use your thumb, but sometimes it doesn't want to clear past that light. It's literally just a covering panel, that tiny little piece there. Um, later I'll show you, you know, I thought it actually would stop this, but I'll show you what it looks like if you don't open that up. All right, next you want to grab this little panel here. It's a cover down panel, but you need it to be down. Don't forget to put it back when you go back to vehicle mode. It just is a filler piece there, but you have to kind of get that out for things to fit. Now I'm going to bring this panel in this way. Bring this down this way. And you can kind of see how this is going to go. This panel is going to go up and peg in and hold that in place. And this is going to cover down. And now you have a completely filled out, you know, shin. Right. That should stay up. We're going to bring this down. We're going to rotate at this joint here. It is on a screw, so if it is loose, you can tighten that. And then bring this back all the way. And just flatten out that foot. So you have the heel and the toe kind of straight, flat on the floor. Right? So that's one side pretty much done. I'm going to do this side. All right, next we'll take care of the midsection and the upper body. So go ahead and rotate these panels out. These are going to rotate So kind of open this up and then rotate these to the back. We're going to open up this panel all the way so it sits 90 degrees flat. We're going to bring this chest down. And that's going to peg in right there and meet up there. Now you can take the arms, rotate them, and then bring them down on that panel. We can open up this arm all the way. This seat is going to slide, uh, basically it does two things. So it goes up and down like this, so slide it down, and then slide it to the outside. So it sits on the, basically on his elbow, it's like an elbow pad. Then we're going to take this, fold the door down so it closes on the side of the arm. This is going to come down, and you can kind of see how this is going to sit. That's going to sit flat, and that's going to meet up, and you can see a nice smooth surface there. All right, same on this one, bring this down. Then we're going to slide the hands out and rotate them on both sides. Slide them out, rotate them. All right, and the last bit here is to take care of this backpack. So come to here, we're going to fold these down. There's little slots right here. Those are going to fit on top of these two tabs. You can see there's a little groove where this panel is going to fit right under here. So it does kind of lock in place. And then these will fit onto the back of this metal panel. So just got to make sure they meet, they meet up. All right, and there is Fioravanti in his robot mode. And he really is quite good looking. Um, yeah, the paint really worked out here. He's got some nice gunmetal gray for the head, silver for the face, the eye mask, and then white for the face. The paint on the hood looks really nice in the robot mode. Just great. So for being here with some blue, yellow, and red accents, that looks really good. Paint here, pretty much 100% painted with the other exception of the hands, I believe. Nice gunmetal gray here, that looks nice. It kind of forms a nice solid piece here now that it's transformed. Coming down to the legs, you got the silver paint on the thighs and the forearms. A little bit here for those knee pads from the vehicle mode and then the feet are painted yellow, white, and blue, and those look really good. These are die cast down here. The thighs are also die cast. There's a lot of weight down below, which is a good thing for robots like this because the weight is planted. Um, I will say the tolerances vary from place to place, uh, but overall it does feel nice and solid. Um, you know, nice solid bot. The knees are probably where, you know, and I'll talk about that when I go over articulation, but overall the, the feel of the 
hardware is very nice, especially with that weight. Let's go over his articulation. The head is on a rotating swivel, but it goes all the way up to there. And it's for transformation, but it really works well. And then you can go down basically all the way to there. If you want more, you can fold that panel in and can even further. So pretty much all you could need up and down. Rotates around on that swivel. Shoulders rotate all the way around on a friction hinge. It is nicely toleranced here on the shoulder. Up on this hinge here, that's a pin that's also toleranced pretty nicely. It feels like a you know, well-made joint. There's a butterfly joint here that will go back and forth. That's due to the transformation, but it does work as a butterfly joint. The arms are double jointed. The elbows can go up to there before it uh, hits this piece here. Um, those work pretty well. Rotation at the wrist. The wrists do fold in and out, um, and the wrist itself is what's keeping this from collapsing back. If you close up the hand, you, you in certain positions it can collapse back, but overall it seems to work well. The fingers are on a single pin, so the bottom three fingers are together, and then the pointer finger is separate, but it's curled. So you have the curly pointing finger, which I don't find it particularly useful, but... And then the thumb is on a single pin, so you can, you know, kind of form a fist here. I mean, out of the waist, you have a rotation here. Uh, I believe, yeah, it goes all the way around. There is a minuscule ab crunch, pretty much that much. Um, it, and it doesn't really work once you rotate. It, you know, it's basically rendered void once you go, once you rotate. Coming down to the legs, you have the connected hip skirts. I really like how they did this. The hip skirt rotates with the leg, and you get the leg all the way up to there. Very, very nicely done. Back to here, all the way, and again, the hip skirt's moving with it. Beautifully painted hip skirt too, by the way. Out to the side on friction, it does hold. Tolerance there is okay, at least on my copy. Rotation at the thigh, nice tight tolerance there as well. Uh, and like I mentioned, the knee is where the tolerance is a little bit loose. Now, I actually thought, and I left one panel in so I could show you. I thought this panel, which is really just a cover down panel right there, and I left this one open so you can see. I thought that was going to hold the lower joint from bending. You can see that lower joint is bending and not the top joint. But it doesn't It doesn't actually block, it's just to cover that hole. It doesn't stop that lower joint and the lower joint's on a pin. So you can get the double jointed knee, but that lower one is just a little bit looser than the top one. The top one is on a, a screw. You can tighten the screw. Uh, on my copy, the his uh, right knee is a little bit loose while it's extended all the way down you know, in this position, but as you bend it, it gets a little bit tighter. So that's just something to watch out for. Those screws can loosen. You could just, you know, back it out and then tighten it again. Is my, my recommendation for that. Continuing down, you have ankle tilt all the way back and forth. Again, this is on, everything here is on a screw. So one, two, three screws. So you can tighten all three of those screws. If your ankle tilt is too loose, you can tighten. If your ankle rotation is too loose, you can tighten that one. And if it's going back and forth when you don't want it to, you can tighten that one. For his accessories, you get quite a few things here. You get this blaster, again, painted, sculpted nicely. And this will tab into the hand very well. And we can use this blast effect on this gun. We'll just plug in right there. Um, I recommend holding the gun and then tabbing it in after you peg it, but uh, yeah, the hand can tend to knock the gun, so make sure you close the thumb onto the gun, but there you go, that's really good. I, I really like that. They're giving you blast effects. Blast effects are something that's underutilized in third party. I also get this gun here. Slightly so different shape, nicely sculpted, painted, same as the other one. You can open up the thumb, get this pegged in here, and then close down the thumb, and then close down the fingers. Um, and like I mentioned, this the wrist panel sometimes doesn't like to stay, you know, slid all the way down. Uh, but this gun also, you can take this blast effect 
and that'll plug into there. And now you have, you know, two blast effects, which I think look pretty good overall. You know, really nice that they included those. Uh, lastly, you get this gun here, and you get another blast effect. Uh, let's see, is that the right one? I think that's the right one for this. For your size comparison, there it is next to the Magic Square Optimus Prime and the Takara Tomy Masterpiece Blue Streak, another car bot here. Fits in perfectly, it's pretty much the same size as our car bots. Um, maybe a little bit wider chest, but overall looks really nice with uh, Masterpiece bots. So final recommendations on the X Transbot Fioravanti. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5, I'm going to recommend it. I really love the alt mode on this guy. The Ferrari itself already looks good. It's got nice features, pop-up headlights, opening doors, interior, and the wings that pop out, the flipping uh, roof where you can change the look of it. All of that is awesome. Robot mode, pretty good. Um, there's a couple of little QC things. I actually figured out what was going on here with this hand. There's actually a screw missing right there. Um, and that screw actually tightens down this arm. So that arm is a little bit loose, which is why you're not getting enough resistance for this hand. So if you have that issue, just look to see if you're missing a screw. This one has a screw, that's why this one's nice and tight. Um, the other one was this knee um, can be loose. Now mine is okay right now, but I imagine over time that pin might loosen. So you just gotta watch out for, for that stuff, but those are pretty minor gripes. I really like this figure. Um, I, I also like how it looks in robot mode. Plenty of accessories. I love blast effects. I think that's a great thing. More third-party companies should be doing that. Bravo to X Transbots on delivering a really good, fun figure that looks great on the shelf and has accessories that make sense. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to the Chosen Prime for allowing me to pick this up at TFCon. We'll see you next time.